Carter Monson is the food and wine writer of the Herald Sun. She has written a, a piece today explaining why she's not drinking for a month, although obviously being wine writer, that's a bit difficult. Cara, good morning. Neil, how are you going? How are you going to re- are you just going to review non-alcoholic wines? Well, a little bit of yes and no to that one. I, uh, I think I'm in a fortunate position where when I am reviewing wines, I can do them in advance. So January, I did get quite a few reviews in um, responsibly. Uh, and yeah, it was a big month, but we got some in. And um, this month, I'm actually going to focus a lot more on local uh, producers who are making some really great non-alcoholic drinks. Well, what, okay, I'd like to get to that because I drink them. Why are you giving up for a month? So there's a number of reasons. The first was to sort of give my body a break because I did have this awful thought where I was like, oh, when was the last time I had like a long stint without alcohol? And I will preface that by saying I don't drink every day uh, and I don't really drink, you know, like it's not a regular thing for me. But being in my role, like I do find myself out and about quite a bit. I have a weekly restaurant uh, review uh, series in the Herald Sun. Uh, I have a wine review column in the Herald Sun, which I need to do weekly. Uh, I'm also out and about at events. And last year we had... um, you know, big year, first year out of lockdown. We had the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival. And then I went straight into, like, uh, our eating season, which is ah. essentially when we do our Delicious 100 Guide. So that's when I'm out, like, every single, essentially every single night at restaurants eating and drinking and, and writing about it. So I just thought, you know what? It's time just to have a bit of a break. And we need to step away from it. When did you step away from it? Uh, so I had my last drink on Sunday night, oh, and uh, yeah, you, and then won't be drinking uh, yeah until the end of well until March. It's too early to be feeling any better, isn't it? Or do you feel any different? I feel good. I, I feel like uh, it's it's been three days, but I mean, as I said earlier, I don't really drink during the week unless I'm out reviewing or at events. And and this week, uh, by chance, I haven't been out to review or t- uh, to an event yet. So we'll see how it goes later in the week. You could always get a real job where you didn't have to eat and drink all the time. I know it's a hard job, Neil, but someone has to do it. But um, <laughs> no, it, it's a great gig, and I love my job. But I, I honestly feel like if there's an opportunity as well here in Melbourne where we're so spoiled because there's so many great non-alk options out there like not only in the bottle shops but even when you go to restaurants now like there's so many uh, options for non-alk beers pre-mixed drinks wines like we're, we're very spoiled in melbourne i must well, say I was, I was gonna get to that because i was reading one of the wine column it might have been yours at the weekend or glancing through it and i thought time we started to review non-alcoholic wines um i would say as a person who likes beer the beer is terrific the wine is not And I 100% agree with you, Neil. I think you're spot on. I think the the thing is with the non-alc product, like because we come from such a big drinking culture here in Australia, when we go to that non-alc option, we we think that it's going to be exactly the same, but it's not. And alcohol does play a huge part in the wine experience. Like, you know, obviously there's fermentation involved and a lot of the flavour comes from that. So when we're taking alcohol out of the wines, some of them can be a little bit mm, iffy. But uh, with beer, I feel like it's got the most likeness. And there's some really good ones out there in Melbourne, like or in, in Australia anyway. I feel like they've nailed that. And even another um, skew as well, which I think is really interesting, there's some producers out there who are not doing beer, wine or spirits. They're sort of carving their own path and and doing things with kombucha and and teas and and, and things like that. So I think that's something that will really take off in the next few years. You got a favourite non-alcoholic beer? Ooh, I, I feel like it's not a Melbourne brand, but I do love Heaps Normal. I feel like they're doing some excellent stuff. Yeah. And this yeah, and there's some really good ones. Like, I know the big houses, like all the big players, like your Peronis and your Heinekens, they've all got, like, a non-alc um, option, and they drink on par to the actual thing. So I feel like there's some good ones. And can you, um, can you give me one good non-alcoholic white wine to drink? Oh, Geeson out of New Zealand yeah. are doing some excellent stuff. Like, I feel like the rosés and the white wines, they are on point. Yeah, I think they do a Sav Blanc, don't they? Yeah, they do, and it's delicious. Like they've got, they're they're actually onto a really good thing. So has Australia changed forever, do you reckon, or we go back to being boozers? I reckon we've changed. And to be honest, Neil, I think in 10 years' time, 
not having a non-alc drinks list at your restaurant will be kind of like not having a vegan or a veg offering today. I honestly think we've turned a corner. Good, Cara. Thank you for speaking to us. Cara Monson, Herald Sun uh, food and wine reviewer.